That's good. So let's dive right into the object-oriented principles of PHP. So far, what you and I have been building, and I'm going to show you samples from my Timex, which I have given you plenty of samples from previous weeks. All we have done so far is take an HTML page, rename it as a PHP, put scripting tags somewhere in that PHP, and then put function calls. Create variables here and there, but all we have done is function calling. Can you give me an example? MySQL I close. What is that? It's a function that allows you to close the database. What about MySQL real scape string? To scape the value, right? Before you call MySQL to query it. What about this one? MySQL I query. That's what you guys use to call, to tell the database, hey, execute this query. All this stuff, all this stuff we have done, it's 90s. This is not how websites are supposed to be built. And you know why? Because absolutely all the content database connection, business information about the website, everything is included in the PHP. The actual HTML that is going to be showing up. That's what it's typically called a two-layer application. What's, what are the two layers? Can anybody see the two layers here? What will be the two layers? I'm talking about like the, like the two major components of this web application. Front end and back end. What's the, what's the front end? No. The front end is all this PHP stuff. And what's the back end? The database. When you want to modify either to do maintenance on it or to in augment the functionality, when you want to modify a web application, that it's a two-tier application, it's a maintenance nightmare because each one of the PHP files that you see here everybody will put their hands on it everybody who who do I mean by everybody the database management team the web design team the programmers team they're all going to try to modify the piece that they know of the system into the same file. And that's horrible. Because the web designs, in trying to do their best effort in creating a nice design, they're going to break the code. The programmers, in trying to do the best they can do as programmers and program the system in that file, they're going to break the design. And the database managers, in trying to do their best about knowing about the database and the queries and, on, and the business, they're going to either break the design and or 
the um, the programmer's uh, effort. So you start, you guys start to see what where I'm going. In? So in the late '90s, early 2000s. Web developers noticed this nightmare, and they said, "You know what? We're going to have to do something about it." And they—that's when they, back in those days, starting from college and universities, this fellow called um, uh, Fowler, Mr. Fowler, Dr. Fowler, who is also a professor at, at university, created what it's called the MVC pattern, the Model View Controller pattern. And basically what he says and supports and proves is that if you developed a web application broken into three different components, the model component, the view component, and the, um, and the controller components, you're going to make, you're going to end up building a web application that it's scalable, easy to maintain, Etc. Etc. So, to do that, we have to create what it's called a three-tier system. Okay. So, what do we have to do with the three-tier web application? I mean, what do we have to do with the two-tier web application to convert it into a three-tier? Can anybody tell me? Web application. So we're going to keep the database. So that's one of our three. So what are the other two? But those two will have that kind of pattern. The other two tiers are going to be the front end, because we have to produce some kind of front end, right? The problem right now is that in the front end, we also have business rules and we have uh, design and everything included. So what we have to do is we have to break them in separate tiers. So the idea is to keep the presentation, the front end, as the third tier and extract from it the business rules, okay, and the, the 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 more coding part, not so much the presentation, which is what HTML is and cascading style sheets and JavaScript and all that. The 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 the, the actual business rules and the actual web application code extracted out of that second layer, and that's going to be the second layer in the three tier. So it's going to be database one business, objects, two, front end, three. So what we have to do is we have to take this existing code, which is the PHP code that you guys are supposed to turn in tonight, that you're going to turn in next week, okay? And from each page, extract the business objects. You're going to say, extract what? Okay. So, what are the business objects? If I'm talking about, and this is going back to the wiki where you and I have been collaborating throughout the semester in the specifications of your project. If we were to talk about the Timex web applications, these will be the objects, the business objects. In other words, in Timex, I have the concept of a timesheet, which is represented in one table. I have the concept of an employee, which is also represented in another table. The concept of a department, the concept of a payment or pay stub, whatever you want to call it, okay? Those are going to become 
the business objects. So instead of having a query inside an HTML page that returns back an array, right? Because that's what it did, really. The query returned an array where you would say, okay, array sub employee name, array sub employee type, and you will get all the different components of the employee. What you're going to do is you're actually going to create the concept of the employee in plain PHP code. Hence, you're going to have to create what is called the blueprint, the blueprint of an employee. In object-oriented principles, which you already, all of you know, that means it's going to be the employee class. So for each one of the main entities in your model, you're going to create the entity class, the equivalent entity class. So in Timex, I'm going to have to create timesheet class. And I'm going to have to create employee class. And I'm going to have to create payment class and department class. Okay? And each one of the fields in the object are going to be attributes or properties in the class. And you're going to have to make them private because you don't want anybody to messing, be messing around with the private, ver with the uh, variables or the attributes of the class. You are going to decide how that's going to be done. And you're going to have to create what it's called modifiers or accessors to those properties. That's typically what's called the getters and setters. So you're going to have to provide functions for each one of these fields. You're going to have to provide functions that would allow people to get their value, hence called a getter, or set their value, hence called a setter. Okay? Once you do that, once you create the classes, for each one of these, you're going to be, be able to create what it's called an object out of those classes. An object is an instantiation of a class. So you're going to be able to create many employees. Each one will have the same look and feel as the employee, meaning they will have the same properties. but they will have different values in their properties. And that's what we want instead of an array like we have been doing. Okay? Now we're also going to have to create for each one of these classes, we're going to have to create their persistence classes. What is a persistence class? also call managers in many different uh, platforms. The managers or the persistence classes are the classes that know how to do the CRUDs on each one of those objects. Can you tell me what are the CRUDs? Create, read, update, and delete. So you guys are going to have no more about this function that calls open the database, no more about this function that calls query Q, where Q is the variable that holds the, uh, the query. No more of that. You're going to extract all that code out of the PHP that you have provided, and you're going to have to input it into the managers of these entities. So what's the first approach? Create classes for the main entities. Second, create the managers of those entities. The managers are the ones that, that will allow you to do the CRUDs on them. And then you will create, finally, you will create what it's called the controllers. And the controllers 
are going to be that imp the ones that implement your 10 functional requirements. So I need to see 10 controllers. And I'm going to tell you what a controller looks like. What's one of the functional requirements that Timex is implementing? Login is one. Another one would be timesheet list or registration. So I'm going to need for timesheet to implement timesheet list, for instance, I'm going to need what it's called a controller. And this controller will have functions. Functions that will use the entity managers and functions that will use the entity classes to be able to produce a result for a given functional requirement. In the case of a timesheet list, what do you guys think? Am I going to need a timesheet? Obviously. So, timesheet list, the controller, will create, will have a function. You, you, it's up to you what you want to call it. List of timesheets or timesheet list, whatever you want to call it. That will have references to the timesheet class. Why? because it needs to create timesheets. After all, it's trying to create a list of them. But, is that enough? No. It's going to have to go to the database and bring the timesheets for somebody. Now, does the controller know how to do that? No. It needs the help. The help, the help of who? Entity Manager. In this case, the Timesheet Manager. So the Timesheet Manager is the one that does the CRUDs, the Create, the Read, the Update, and the Delete of Timesheets in the database. So how is it going to do it? In this case, what would it be? Would it be a create, a read, an update, or a delete? No. I'm trying to get a list of timesheets from somebody, from an employee. It's going to be a read. Very good. So one of the functions in the timesheet manager is going to be read. And the timesheet manager will know how to connect to the database, how to build a query to read, and it will return all the timesheets that it needs back to the controller. So the controller, all it needs to do is send this output to to an HTML page that knows how to do, how to present it, how to view it. Okay? So the idea is that our, our actual PHP code, the one that we have created so far, that huge timesheet list PHP code is going to be significantly reduced. Because that PHP code is going to concentrate just on displaying the list of timesheets. Everybody else will have, will be delegated to do the rest of the work. Timesheet will hold a timesheet. Timesheet managers will be able to retrieve a list of timesheets out of the database. And timesheet list controller will make use of those, everybody, and just send that information to the timesheet list PHP that presents it.
Okay, so if you have a two-tier web application, how would you guys approach building the three-tier? Well, if the, our two-tier web application contains most of the code, wouldn't you want to start from there? Okay. So if we want to start from our existing web application, this is what I will do. I will take my existing Timex PHP and I will copy it. And then I will call it Timex Object Oriented. PHP path, etc., etc. And then what do you do? You just import it into Eclipse. I mean, you're welcome to do it this way. This is how I'm going to do it. You, if you want to continue doing it in Notepad, or any other editor, it's up to you. So here it is. The Timex Object Oriented PHP project. Okay? Are we going to keep the images? Are we going to keep the JavaScript? Are we going to keep the styles? Yeah, definitely. We're going to keep all that stuff. Now, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to add a class, a PHP class. It's a new PHP file, okay? That is going to represent my timesheets. In fact, it's going to represent only one timesheet. Okay? This is going to be our timesheet class. And this is the convention, guys. I need you to have this convention because, unfortunately, object-oriented PHP is very loosely defined. Okay? There's no real... like Unlike cake PHP, cake, cake PHP is very rigorous. Because... It tries to simplify things. So as long as you stay under the way the kick PHP is supposed to configure things, everything will be smooth. If you go off track, which you could do with object oriented PHP, then you're in trouble. So this is the convention in object oriented PHP. The business objects or the blueprints of the business objects will all be starting with the word class. Okay? That should be the name of the file. And they're all going to be in lowercase. So this is going to be the class of of timesheet. And it's going to be a PHP file. So you'll keep the PHP extension. There it is. So I'm going to end up with class dot employee dot PHP class dot etc. Now, what is what is the reserve word? Yes, good guess. class. Now I want you to guys have the same convention as in Java. Okay? That is all classes must start with capital letter. 
all variables must start with lower case letters. Functions will always start with lower case letters. And they can all be camel cased. You know what that means, right? Camel cased. Meaning if it has more than one word, if the name has more than one word, the first one will be lower case and the subsequent first letter of all the other words will be uppercase. Yes. But it's in words, not letters, words. So in this case, class timesheet is going to be capital T. Okay, now I'm going to bring up, who knows better than the timesheet class, what the timesheet components are. Who will that be? The database. So I'm going to go into my database backup and I'm going to copy the attributes of my timesheet. I just can't remember all the attributes. And what am I going to do with them? For each one of them, I'm going to create a private variable. And there is such a thing as to modify a private. When you do this, if you declare it just as var, like we have been doing so far, like this, var, and then the name of the variable, it's going to be public. And anybody can modify it. Okay? We don't want that. We want to be able to control who can modify our variables. So private variable ID. Close parentheses of the class you write. Good catch. And then you do the same with all the other ones. So, man, this is going to be typing intensive. Now, how am I going to modify the employee ID or the status code of a timesheet if these guys are private? No, you need a function, what it's called an accessor or a modifier that allows you to read the value from the variable and assign a variable, a value to the variable. So, unfortunately, didn't let me toggle comment. Okay, I'm 
going to leave the rest of the code there so that I can come back later and without typing a whole lot I can actually modify my class. So how am I going to provide an accessor to the employee ID for instance? Anybody? Yeah, remember, I need to provide two functions, right? One is called the getter and the other one is the setter. What's the purpose of the getter? To get the value of the variable. What's the purpose of the setter? To set the value of the variable. Good. So let's start with the getter. Anybody? Function. If I can type. Function what? Get. And I need everybody to follow the same convention. Get lowercase g. Why? Because it's the name of a function. Right? And then the rest of the name should be camel cased. So what's the next word? Employee ID, right? Employee ID. All right. No parameters. What is this guy going to return? It's going to return that up there dollar sign employee ID right okay in fact not just any employee ID it's the employee ID of this class remember that the employee ID of this class okay so that's why you guys need to put the this modifier and this is how you refer to either a function or a variable inside a class with the dash greater than, also called the arrow. Yes. Dash greater than. So if you want to provide a getter to the employee ID, you have to create this function called the get employee ID. Unlike in Java, yeah, the question is, wouldn't wouldn't Eclipse create it automatically for you? I wish. Uh, in Java, there was under source generate getters and setters, but you can only generate element comment format as Java is. Alright, so we have created the getter, right? What about the setter? No. The setter is the one that we call in order to set the value to employee ID. Right? So, is it going to be a function, what is it going to be? Set, capital, I mean, uh, lowercase s, set, what? Employee ID. Now, in this case, we're going to have to pass as a parameter the value that we want to set it as, right? So, we're going to pass amp ID. Okay? Or temp or whatever you want to call it, but just make sure that you Okay? And then what do we do? You say this employee ID assign 
whatever is in the parameters. All right. And we do that for every single one of the fields or attributes of the class. Now, when the attribute of the class is read only, you provide the getter, but not the setter. Right? Think about it. It's a read only. So you provide a getter, but not the setter, because you don't want it to be modified. Okay, next, we need to provide a manager of timesheets. Right? What does the manager or persistence of timesheets is supposed to do? The CRUDs. Create, read, update, and delete timesheets in a database. So we're going to create one. Create a new PHP. Create a new PHP file. What is the convention? Class dot. What is it going to be? Timesheet manager. Yes. Timesheet manager dot PHP. Okay. Finish. It's going to be a class. What's the convention? Timesheet ma manager. Okay. Now, typically, business classes hold data. Typically, manager classes do things. So right now, we're not going to hold much, but we're going to provide a function. What is the first function that we want to provide? Let's see. I'm aiming towards implementing timesheet list. Timesheet list of a particular employee. What would be the functionality that I'm trying to implement? In the manager, from the manager perspective. Is it create? No. Is it read? Yes. I'm trying to read from the database a list of timesheets for a particular employee. OK. You guys are not paying attention. Back to design. I'm trying to provide this functionality in object-oriented PHP. What is this functionality? Am I creating something here? Am I updating something here? Am I deleting something here? No. I'm reading. What am I reading? A list of timesheets for a particular employee. That's what I'm aiming for. So, the functionality that I need right now as a timesheet manager is the read. Read what? Read one timesheet? Read all timesheets? Read timesheets for an employee? 
multiple timesheets. Yes. All right. So we have determined that it's multiple timesheets. So read timesheet. Now, is it timesheets? Is it from everybody? Or is it for an employee? All right. Timesheets for an employee. Do I know the name of the employee? No. But I know the ID. Right? Because he or she logged in. And in the session, remember, in the session I have the ID. How about if I pass the ID? I need the ID, right, of the employee. In fact, I'm going to call it employee ID. Aha. Uh -huh. So, this function should return what? A list, a list of timesheets for that particular employee. Okay, so this is the part where I'm going to just extract out of my timesheet list the query and stuff. This is the query. Okay. And this is the call to the query. Everybody agrees with me? Now, does the timesheet manager know what MySQL iQuery is? Yes, it does. Because MySQL iQuery is a function that it's available, right? It's a PHP function. But does it know where the database connection is? No, it doesn't. So, what do we have to do? We have to tell it where the database connection is, right? How do we typically do that? Aha. Uh -huh. So the manager is the one that knows how to go to the database and create a query for a specific function, execute the query, and return the results. And that's what managers should be able to do. That's it. Either create, either read, either update, or delete out of the database entities. Okay, now at this point we can say, okay, what's the, what's going to be the object that I'm going to be returning as the read timesheets from an employee result? Anybody tell me?
Well, I have to. When I call read timesheets for an employee, what do you guys expect at as a return? We could just return the R, which is the MySQL result, right? Or what else could we do? What have we done in timesheet list? You guys remember? After the MySQL query, what have we done? All the rows, and for each row, right? We could do that. We could actually go through the entire result set of the query and produce an array of. An array of timesheets. Yes. But what's the problem? Guys, take a look at the query. Take a look at the query. From how many tables are we getting information? Two. Timesheet and department. So it's not a good idea to return just an array of timesheets because I'm going to be having what? Information about another table that I have no idea about, which is departments, or at least timesheet manager doesn't have an idea about. We're going to have to have a what? A department manager that knows about departments, how to do the cruds on departments, etc., etc. So at this point, I'm just going to return the result of the query. Okay? And then I'm going to provide one more class. Can anybody tell me what this PHP class is going to be? What did I say the compo the the different um the different components of the model view controller pattern three tier architecture was gonna be? First the classes, right? The classes that that are represented by each one of the entities. Then each class will have its own manager, right? The managers are the ones that knew, know how to do the cruds against the database. And then, who are the ones that are going to implement our functional requirement? The controllers, the controllers. Guys, the controllers. So we're going to have to create a class controller well timesheet because it's it's class and the name of the name of the um of the functional requirement right what am i trying to do timesheet list that's one of my functional requirements timesheet list so this class will implement timesheet list and it's a controller if i can spell 
class timesheet list controller and it's a PHP what is it timesheet list it's two words camel case controller three words actually What does the time sheet list controller supposed to do? It's supposed to use all the other classes to help it produce the time sheet list. Okay. So how do we do that? Does the timesheet list controller know about the timesheet manager? No, it doesn't. Does it have to? Yes, it does. Now he knows about the timesheet manager. What are we what do you want to call when you want to produce the timesheet list? What do you want to call? From the front end. Imagine that you have the front end, right? The front end is your timesheet list HTML. And that guy is going to call the controller and say, I want you to do this. What is that? This. It's going to be a function. And this is something that has been decided in many different frameworks and platforms to be the same all across the controllers. In, for instance, some platforms or frameworks, it's called a do. So you always have a function called do. In the timesheet list controller, when you say do, that means you're going to do the timesheet list functionality. If you are in the login, you will have the do. And the do function will do the login because that's what the controller does. So we're going to call it the do. Do. Right now we don't know if we're going to need parameters. Fortunately, do is a reserved word. So do timesheet list. Do is a reserved word in PHP, so you can you cannot have obviously a fun, um, function with that name. Okay, so how do we do the timesheet list? Can anybody tell me? How about if we call the timesheet manager? So we're going to create a new timesheet manager. This is how you do it. Oh wow, that's pretty cool. So the timesheet list controller, the guy that is in charge of producing a timesheet list, all he has to do is, hey, timesheet manager, come over here. That's a new instance of the timesheet manager. Right? Then what are you going to tell it? 
I need you to do this for me. Do what? I need you to read timesheets for an employee. Now, it needs an employee ID. Right? Which, by the way, it has to be put here. Forgot. <laughs> you have to put it, you know, coming from the parameter, you have to put it in the query. So where is the timesheet list controller going to get the ID from? Who calls the timesheet list controller? The web page. You guys are going to see the web page is going to be, hey, timesheet list controller, produce the timesheet list. That's it. then the timesheet list controller has to know for who. So you're going to have to pass it as a parameter. Okay? So do timesheet list is going to need the employee ID, which you are going to pass to the manager. Now, this is a functionality. This is a functionality. Read timesheets for an employee that returns what? It returns the result of the query. Correct? Can we return that? Because this class, Timesheet Manager, is going to have also another function. Call what? Read one timesheet. With timesheet ID. being passed. And it's going to have another one, another function, called what? Read all timesheets, which doesn't need any parameters. And it's going to have another one called delete timesheet. And you're going to pass the timesheet ID that you want to delete. And each one of these functions is going to have its own query. And all that you're going to do is you're going to build a query for that specific function and call my SQL query. Get the results. That's what a manager is supposed to do. The manager doesn't care who needs that information. All he cares is, hey, my responsibility is you want one timesheet, I know how to get it. Here it is. Hey, you want all the timesheets? 
Here they are. And he had his own queries. Okay? What about the controller then? The controller is responsible for delegating to the right people the functionality. So in this case, timesheet list controller has to deal with the timesheet manager. That's why you are doing a require once of the timesheet manager. And actually, it needs one of the many functions from that manager. Which one? Read timesheets for an employee. That's it. So, how does all this PHP code change my timesheet list at PHP? You guys remember my timesheet list PHP? That's the guy, that's the two tier guy that had everything in it. So now you're going to analyze that timesheet list PHP and you're going to start taking things out of it. That is not its concern. For instance, do we need the header? It's part of the HTML code. We do need it. What about the configuration constants? Okay? Remember, we have to work at this process gradually. So let's make it work with extracting just a few features out of the timesheet list. Okay? So we're going to keep this one. Eventually, I'm going to get rid of it. What about the menus? Do, get, do I get rid of the menus? No. What about the session information? You do need the, t the, the session information in timesheet list. In fact, if you're not logged in, you should not be able to go into timesheet list. And that's something that you guys have to understand how I did it. Because you guys, that's how you guys are going to control what can everybody see and what can only certain individuals who have authenticated in your website can see or do. Okay? What about this MySQL Connect? Am I going to need it? No. What about querying the database? Am I going to need it? No. Nope. I'm not going to need this stuff. Oh, very good. So who's going to do all that stuff for me? the controller. So timesheet list must know about the controller. What is it? Class timesheets timesheet list controller got it now the session is going to tell me who is logged in the session the ID in the session right and that's exactly what I'm going to do 
I'm going to take a variable called the timesheet list controller and I'm going to instantiate it as new timesheet list controller. And what am I going to do? I'm going to tell it, hey, please do timesheet list with this ID. And I'm passing that ID from the session. What am I getting back? Guys, remember what am I getting back from the timesheet list controller? the query result, remember? Which I'm going to call here, or I was calling here, R. And that's it. That's the first level of abstraction that you're supposed to do in converting a two-tier web application into a three-tier web application. Now, that's not enough. Eventually, what I want to do is I want to get rid of everything as much as I can that is PHP-related out of this page. Because guess what? This page is going to be manipulated, updated, and maintained by web designers. And web designers are only responsible for the HTML, the look and feel, not the function, not the PHP functionality. If we want to modify the look and feel of the website, we just provide the few PHP files to the web designers that have the least amount of PHP code. We haven't done, we haven't done it all yet. Eventually, we're going to have to get rid of the configuration stuff. I don't want that stuff to be in there. I want to be able to get rid of these MySQL number of records stuff. I want to be able to provide instead of the result set, I want to provide just a list of timesheets. Okay? And what about this part? The redirection. Closing the database and the redirection. Eh. I want to get rid of that stuff too. In fact, I want the controller to do the re redirection. So when the controller calls, hey, give me all the timesheet, and it comes back and returns it to here, when it's done, it will call the redirection. All right, moment of truth. You guys want to see it running? The good thing is the login it's still two-tier, right? Eventually, the login, we're going to have to replace it as a three-tier as well. But the login is two-tier, and we know that it works. So that would allow us to get the ID in the session that we need for timesheet list. So let's debug it. And auto-generate. So we're going into sign-in. I don't know what happened.
in there. Um, Timex. Uh oh. PHP. It's going to be X Debugger. We're going to do sign in. Wait a minute. There's something wrong with the uh, with the project. It's not auto generating. It's not auto generating the URL, and that's not good. Timesheet list. That's the wrong one. Sign in from my OO project. Now we're talking. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Did everybody get my message about the buffer? The buffer setting? Yeah. Because some people were creating a huge menu. So it was filling out the buffer. When the buffers fill out, it says, I'm not going to accept any more until I send this. So it goes and sends it. So when you tell it to delete the buffer, it says, oops, sorry, can't do that. Too late. One, two, three, four, five. Sign in. Here it is. Timex oh oh sign in. Timex oh oh timesheet list. Here it is. This is the one that we modified. So we're gonna do session start. We're gonna include the configuration. We're gonna include the controller, the header, the menus. Then we ask whether the session employee ID is set. Yes, it is. So what do we do? We grab out of the session the ID. We create a new timesheet list controller. And then, and then we're going to tell the timesheet list controller, hey, do timesheet list for this guy. Do you want to see it? Instead of stepping over, we're going to step into. There it is. What is the first thing that the controller does? It says, wait a minute, I know who can help me. The timesheet manager. The timesheet manager knows about everything that he needs to know about timesheets. So it creates a new timesheet manager. And then it tells it, hey timesheet manager, read timesheets for this employee. Instead of step, stepping over, we're going to go into step into. Here it is. Timesheet for one employee. Employee 1. It's going to create the query. It's going to return the results. Yeah. Back to the HTML page. This guy will do its thing. Which we already know. No time she's been found for this employee. Whoa. Whoa. What happened? Can anybody tell me what happened? right so everywhere else where I l use it which is only at the my SQL query call
So time sheet list controller should not need this. So it's part of the manager, correct? Because remember, the manager is the one that is supposed to do. The manager is supposed to do the CRUDs and the CRUDs are done against the database so that's the guy that has to know about the database nobody else the controller doesn't really the controller doesn't even know there's a database the controller says oh you want me to do I know who can do it hey come over here and then the other part and I'm gonna I'm gonna provide this code for you online because right now it's almost 8 o'clock um, the other part that I'm gonna extract is the redirection the controller should take care of the direction, redirection. The controller should say, okay, you want me to do a, pro, a time sheet list controller? I know who can take care of it, and I know who is supposed to present it. So time sheet list controller knows that there's a time sheet list PHP that presents the time sheet list. So what have we done? You guys are going to say, well, that's pretty dumb. We created a whole bunch of classes, and this function calls this other function, which calls this other function, which eventually produces the result. Where, you know, we could have done the same thing if we put it everything into one page, right? Which is what we had. To a tier. Well, this is the advantage, guys. From here on, If somebody says, you know what? The timesheets for an employee, when I get the timesheets for an employee, I want to add the date of birth of the employee. Or I want to add, I actually want to add each individual time for each individual date as opposed to a total or whatever. Some kind of business requirement that is changing the way you are manipulating the data. And suppose that this manipulation of timesheets Right now, I'm only doing it in one place, right? But eventually, you're going to see when I complete Timex, I am manipulating timesheets in a lot of places. Timesheet list is one of them. Where else is it? When I'm the manager and I want to see the timesheet list of my employees, that's another timesheet list. Okay? When the guy, the, uh, what is it, the executive that sees a report of all the timesheets of everybody in the company, that's another timesheet list. If the requirements on how timesheet list should be manipulated changes, and you have a two-tier web application, you have to change that requirement in at least three different places. If you do it on a three-tier web application, you will have to do it in one place. This place. Read timesheets for an employee. How am I going to extract all the PHP out of the out of the file? Eventually, you're going to have to put some PHP, right? Because you are calling PHP but it should be at a bare minimum. It should be as simple as require once your controller, instantiate a new instance of the controller, and call a function on the controller. That's it. Connecting to a database, building a query, doing all these different things should not be the concern of the page.